What is up, everybody? I am Kevin Ioli. Anybody who knows me knows how big of a mark I am for Arter Betterbeev. I love this guy as a fighter. What a phenomenal fighter he is. 20 and 0 with 20 knockouts. But he is just not like a seek and destroy guy. He is a seek and destroy guy, but he's got a lot of ability to his game. Uh, on uh, October 12th in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, he will be fighting a massive fight, the biggest fight of his life, when he meets Dimitri Bivol for the undisputed light heavyweight championship at Kingdom Arena. You can see that on ESPN+. And joining me right now is uh, one of the very good and very underrated trainers in boxing, a guy who has uh, helped so many fighters and has a lot of great wars, I'm sure, at that gym in Montreal. Of course, I'm talking about Mark Ramsey. Mark, uh, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. So, uh, first of all, explain to people how you got Arthur. He's uh, He is from Russia. You were working in uh, Montreal, uh, in Canada. How, how did you and Arthur hook up together? Uh, the first time I see him was in the World Chicago 2017 World Amateur Championship. I, I know him from the amateur before that, but the first time that I see him live, and uh, I was there to, to scut a little bit for different uh, uh, amateur boxer to, to see if I can work with somebody and, and bring those guys to Montreal. And but at that time, that was very hard to negotiate with Russian fighter. Uh, mm. uh, this is the same world championship that I signed Oscar Rivas, who became world champion, and also Elidor Alvarez, who also became world champion. In a couple of years after that, uh, I have a, a, business, a business woman from Montreal who have the connection uh, with Arthur, and uh, she asked me if Arthur was a, a good prospect, and definitely that was a that was a easy question to answer. Yes, he is just an incredible fighter in my mind. Now, you know, people look and they see twenty and 0, 20 knockouts, and they think he's just like this big time slugger. Um, but he is, to me, I think he is a really complete boxer. Maybe getting hit a little bit more uh, recently, but I, I love his overall boxing game. Is, is he more than just a slugger, Mark? Of course. But you know what? This is a little bit of tools for us, for her team. Like people, when they look video of him, they really, even other coach, when they prepare against us, they really look at the pure, uh, the first thing you see, it's power and how uh, strong he is and stuff like this. But when you take the time to look at him uh, specific, like you're going to find out he's a very tricky guy. And he, every day in the gym, he work on little details, technical details. And uh, he's a, a lot of time, like the fighter go to the fight and they have that surprise in the ring. Like he's, he's a more complex fighter than people think. Yeah. I, I always thought he had great feet. And the fight that I really, when I saw him was the Gvozic fight where I thought, I picked Vazic to win that fight. And I thought, you know, he's such a good boxer and he's so smart in the ring that, you know, he's going to, you know, kind of work uh, some angles on, on Arthur. And boy, oh boy, number one, you could see the power wearing Vazic down over the fight. But he Ar Arthur was able to set shots up with great footwork in that fight. To me, that fight was peak uh, Arthur. Would you agree with that? Do you feel like that fight uh, said a lot about who he was as a fighter? Do I have your mark? Hello. Yeah. So we had a little bit of glitch there, but uh, so Mark, I was just asking you: Did you think the Gvozic fight was uh, kind of like peak Arthur at that point in terms of an overall game? Yes and no, because uh, when he started as a like as a world champion with the IBF a long time ago, like he, he was like I say, he was he, he was a very rough. He was very very physical, very rough, and with time. He, of course, he gained experience, but also he gained a little bit of, uh, uh, he was more so sophisticated as a technical fighter. And he balanced himself a little bit. Uh, uh, if I compare the, the, the first guy, the guy who came in my gym first and the fighter he is now. Mm -hmm. And I think, I believe that fight was probably the fight who he really realized he was able to do the uh, those things and, and be able to apply every fight. Yeah, no, when I saw that, I'm like going, because I, I really love Kwadzik as a fighter, and I, I, I think that guy had a lot of talent, and Arthur just overwhelmed him both physically and skill-wise, I thought. Yes, like that was a, but the, the fight was very close at one point, I remember, but in the corner, we never, we knew what we doing over there, like we, 
take energy out of uh, Alexander every round. Like we know every shot that we we choose in the in the training camp to make sure to do damage and and be able later in the fight to take him out of of there. What is he like? I mean, you know what? Like I have interviewed him a million times, and most fighters, you say you talk to him and you you have a sense of who they are as a person, right? With him, like he like he is not an interview guy, right? He is stone faced, no. and he doesn't really like. What is a guy like in the gym behind the scenes when when we don't see what's going on? What is Arthur like? He's very serious, like like people can imagine, but he's uh, he's serious in in in, uh, in sense of details and uh, the discipline that he put for his work. And uh, we don't losing time with uh, stupidity around 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 the training. Like it's very very everything every decision that he make is for boxing. What he eat, mm -hmm. what how hours of sleep he have, everything is for boxing. Outside of that, he's very uh, he's very a uh, fu fun guy. Like to be around, he's making joke, very special sense of humor, and uh, it's fun. It's fun to be around. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, he, you know, like I've always felt like, you know, talking to Arthur is like kind of like a lost cause at this point because he, you know, he, he doesn't put up with guys like me very well. So, so we'll go to the man behind the man uh, there. Uh, this fight with Dimitri Bivol is really, fan, you know, fascinating fight. Bivol, of course, uh, a, a tremendous fighter as well. I uh, got a lot of notoriety for beating Canelo Alvarez, but I think he was a really accomplished fighter um, before before he beat Canelo. What do you see the biggest problem that uh, Bivol presents to Arthur? But like everybody knows, he's a very, very good technician. Uh, for me, it's not like a complex fighter. He do what he do, but he's doing so so sharp. He's so good at what he's doing. But he's, he's very mecha mechanical. It's, it's, it's also repetition and repetition, but very, very sharp at what he's doing. Uh, I don't want to talk too much right now because I don't want to give like the direction that we want to take for, for this fight. But uh, I have a lot of respect. He's, he's also a very disciplined guy, a good technique. We have no loss. Like uh, we don't have any blueprint of how to to beat him, but we have a good idea of what we're gonna do next week. Well, let, let me ask you this, Mark. Then, because you know, I I read something that it shocked me and it made me maybe stop for a second about what I think of this fight, right? Um, and, and it said that the person who wrote this article, and I forget who's by, I, I apologize, but they said they thought that Bivol was the better athlete of the two and the more athletic guy. And I would have thought. Arthur was the, the better. Like, what kind of athlete is Arthur is in, in movement, quickness, and that kind of thing? Everything, very, uh, every little, first, it's psychological uh, aspect, like everything that we do in the gym, like even in strength conditioning, push, uh, bench press, or doing sprint, you want to win every single thing, like every sprint, every race, every push at the bench, every, he, he don't want to lose nothing. He's always in competition with everybody and he wants to win. This is a very particular uh, uh, mindset for, for Hartzer. Uh, and in terms also of technique, like he want to learn. You probably heard him already saying that one day you want to be a good boxer, but he say, he said that a lot of time, but he's serious about this. Is is like the guy who want to dedicate all his life to one day be good. Like he want to uh, be better every day that he show at the gym. Is there, you know, if you are an Arthur, better be a supporter. Like if you're one of his fans, do you have any concerns at, that he's, you know, 39 years old, heading, you know, he's getting close to 40 years old at this point. For boxers, you know, late 30s tend to be be difficult, except if you're a heavyweight, right? Uh, any concern at all about his age, and do we have we seen him slow down at all? No, and then he don't give any sign in the gym. Also, like he, like I say, he never like drink alcohol of, of his life. He sleep very good every day. He eat good. He do everything that he have to do. And we don't have any sign in the gym yet that he, he's slowing down. And, and you know, I, maybe not the Callum Smith fight so much, but you know, when you look at a couple of those other fights, especially I'll say the Marcus Brown, Joe Smith, and Anthony Yard fights, he got hit more than than I had seen him get hit before. Like. Uh, a, would you agree with that? Do you think he got hit more in those fights with clean shots, you know? Um, and, and B, was that just, if you agree with that, what was the reason for it? But sometimes it's just the tactical that we use for certain fight. Like, you know, he's a, he's a pressure fighter. He like, he like to be physical in the fight and he take a little bit, some fight, he take a little bit more risk that other fight. And uh, I think it's just about that. Okay. So, so there's nothing that he's, kind of getting arrogant or disregarding instruction or any of that type no, of No, 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 no. Sometimes you just try to impose something and you have to take a little bit more risk.
to impose that uh, that thing. The fact that Bivol is not a knockout puncher, I know he got the stoppage finally. There was that was a big topic of conversation on June on his uh, on his fight, whether you know he would be able to finally get a stoppage. Uh, but Bivol, you know, Arthur is not the uh, Arthur is clearly the bigger puncher. Bivol is not a big puncher. Does that give Arthur maybe a little bit free reign to try to impose his will on Dimitri, knowing that you know he has a good chin and and Dimitri is not the biggest puncher uh, in the world? You know, Dimitri is not the biggest puncher, but he have enough. He generate enough power to get to to have the respect of the opponent. And we cannot do like we cannot do like a kamikaze boxing with him. We you have to be careful. He have snap in his punch enough to hurt people. And he did a, a, even if he don't get the the result with knockout in the fight. You many fight that you look. He, he hurt guy. He hurt guy to the body to the head. And we have to be careful. It's not it's not uh, something that you can just go and uh, don't care about it. If he wins this fight, the winner of this fight will be the first undisputed light heavyweight champion since the great Roy Jones. Uh, and I think that that is going to pop whoever wins this to the, ne you know, the next level in terms of stardom. How do, how do you think Arthur handles that? Like if he wins this fight, he knocks out Dimitri Bivol. He's 21 and 0. He's the undisputed light heavyweight champion. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of demands on his time and he's going to have a lot more people like, you know, yapping at him than maybe he does right now. How will he respond uh, if, if, if that becomes the case? He will try to stay, if it's possible, he will try to stay low profile. This is in nature. He don't like to uh, to do a lot of talk and a lot of media stuff. But I know something. The day after, he will find a new objective, a new goal to motivate himself to come back to the gym. No doubt about that. Last thing, I, and before I let you go, and I really appreciate your time, I know uh, he fought Usyk in the past, right? And I, I'm just curious, uh, have you watched any of those fights between him and Usyk, or have you and Arthur had conversations about what it was like fighting Usyk? And, and what can you t uh, share with us about that? Well, we talk about it a little bit when he came to Canada at first. So it's a long time ago, but I know they fight three times. Arthur win one fight. He lost a two two fight with him. But you have to know that at that time, the national Russian national team put Arthur in ninety one kilos, almost the the cruiserweight uh, right. uh, limit of uh, of weight, and uh, that was not really his category. Now he's a, he was a real eighty one kilos more like light heavyweight right now and Usyk was a, a lot of uh, bigger guys but still uh, he dropped him every fight that he, he have him with him and he, he was a very good challenge for him every fight even if that weight difference was there before I get out of here, I, ju I would be remiss not to talk about your gym I mean you've got uh, Christian and Billy up there uh, um, I'm the guy that just fought uh, uh, Mungi, I'm drawing a blank on now, uh, Brazilian. Uh, yeah, yeah you got a lot of really good uh, fighter, fighters going on out there. Give us an update on those two. Uh, um, Brazilian did a good job against Mungi before he, he got finished. Uh, of course, uh, Christian, uh, you know, undefeated, looking like he may be onto something big. What's going on with those guys? But Christian took a little break after the, the fight with Dever Deverachenko, and uh, he have a little surgery to uh, elbow, but now he's back in the gym this week. And we just uh, wait for the for the big call for him. And uh, if the, the call don't come, we go, we're gonna provoke a begin beginning of the year. We're gonna provoke somebody in a in a in the top of the industry to make sure that people don't forget about us. And mm -hmm. and uh, with Basignan, it's a little bit different. We we think he did a very good fight uh, two, two weeks ago. Just yep. I think the experience at the end of the fight, he tried to to believe and he, he start to believe really in, in that victory and it opened a little bit his technique and give the chance to Mungia to 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 hurt him. But uh, I think this is just uh, the beginning for him. Awesome. Well, good stuff. Uh, Mark Ramsey, appreciate your time as always. Best of luck uh, with uh, Arthur Betterbiev against uh, Dimitri Bivol on October 12th in Riyadh. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you very much.